Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy NMPPIE, and welcome to the YouTube channel. Today's episode, you will just love it because we are going to learn something new about Africa. Man, I've been learning so many things about Africa, but this time it's extraordinary. Africans or Ghanaians will say extra. Oh, it's so extraordinary. So today I'm right here in Pram Pram and outskirts city of Accra. This is a big city, it's so beautiful. Everywhere you go, you can view the ocean from where you are. And guys, I will show you beautiful places around this place. But this time, we are going to learn about our African history. The people that led Africa, the Caribbeans, like so many black people were doing great jobs in the early 1600s up to the 1800s. This, we are not going to waste much time. We are at the ancestral war here in Prom Prom. And this place was inspired by an African-American, which is amazing. He came all the way from America to set up this place. So let me not take much of your time. Let's just get into the video and let me show you what we have here. So come with me. Let's go. Yeah. All right, so we are inside the ancestral wall. In fact, I'm right in front of it. And I see so many beautiful paintings of African leaders that came to help the African co the continent. So if you are here with me, I'm not going to waste much time. I'm going to be here with Mr. Jerry Johnson. He is um, the, the person that is, was inspired by all these people and then he put them on the walls. So guys, let's just get right into the video. Thank you so much thank for you, having thank me today. Thanks for coming. Thanks yeah. for coming. Um, Mr. Johnson, um, yes. you were in America almost your life. Mm -hmm. and then you decided to move to Africa mm -hmm. and which year was the first time you came to Africa? I think it was 93 I believe yeah. Whoa, that was when I was born yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay all right that's amazing so what were you doing in America? well I did a few things but I was mainly in the aerospace industry okay yeah. so uh, I was in the military for a little while sir yeah. yes sir and, uh, you know, different mm. things yeah wow and um, you decided to move to Africa. What inspired you? Because there are so many well, things think, about Africa on well, the I've news. always been, uh, I've always been kind of a um, black activist family. I come from a family of mm -hmm. people who are activists. And so once I started learning more about African histories and civilization, it just seemed to be kind of the natural progression from um, black activism in America to a kind of a global activism and okay. started learning a lot more about people outside of America wow. then um, it just I visited in the early 90s and then mm. was in Senegal first and okay. took me about 10 minutes <laughs> to decide that I was yeah. gonna eventually move to Africa wow it didn't take me long <laughs> 10 minutes just to decide to move back to Africa yeah. how was it like coming for the first time it was a beautiful thing you know mm. I mean black man in a black country you know you don't really get a chance to experience that in the U.S. Even if you're in all black areas, all black neighborhoods, it's still nothing like everywhere you look seeing black people going about their business, uh, not feeling so much tension, right. not so many, you know, threats, drawbacks, all of mm. these things. It's just a kind of a freedom for being around people that are like you. So uh, it's a freedom that most of the blacks in the U.S. Mm -hmm. don't really know they're missing because they've never felt it awesome. so if you've never <laughs> felt it you don't know it right right <laughs> that's really amazing right um now you are in Ghana, Ghana. from prom to be precise and um what brought you here because from prom is um outskirts of Accra so many people come in and yeah. they want to be in the city like yeah. Accra 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 mm -hmm. What brought you to prom prom actually when I first came to prom prom in 2002 I was at with my father Mm. and my brother and a friend and uh, I was coming out here I had a friend who's from Nuningo actually is where oh, I live yeah. here wow. and so I was coming to visit their family but when I saw the place it was all bush out here right. at that time but mm -hmm. I just said wow this is nice living in LA you know it's not easy to get anywhere close to the water right so that was attractive to me mm -hmm. so so I just started talking and then 2003 I came back and started yeah 2003 wow yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing um now let's get straight to this um we have about 90 plus um, paintings mm. on the wall yeah of African leaders Caribbean leaders in, in fact they're all Africans how did it all start well it all started actually with uh, going to the schools you know I used to uh, live near Lagon mm -hmm. and I would spend time you know I've always loved history although I'm not a historian per se mm. 
And I realized talking to a lot of the students at Legon over the time that um, uh, we needed to start it, start getting that history earlier into the young people here, the people here. Because yeah. by the time they get 18, 19, 20, 21, mm -hmm. Ghanaians uh, tend to be very outward oriented, thinking about what's going to, you know, what what's outside yeah. Africa as opposed to what's under their feet uh -huh. and in their air. So I said, well, maybe if I go start talking to the younger ones before mm -hmm. they've been so inculcated with this appetite for getting out, right. that they'll start, you know, have a little different uh, success. So I went into a lot of the schools, but you know, as you know, you go to village schools, they're all over the place and it gets to be logistically challenging. So I had the land and I had the wall, so I just plastered the wall and started painting, not me, okay. having painters mm -hmm. paint right. uh, African ancestors mm. and then bringing the children here on field trips or excursions as they call them here. And now I've had, you know, a whole lot since wow. 2017. Wow. When I entered here... Hundreds and hundreds of children have been through wow. here. Uh, when I entered here, I was thinking it's just an individual thing just to inspire people. Right. Um, but this time, it's just for the communities, for everyone to come in oh, yeah. and have a feel of the place. But it definitely mm. was directed originally toward the youngsters. Still is for me. Mm -hmm. But you know, as other people see it, then, then adults and people start coming from the U.S. and outside the country and they see it on oh. YouTube somewhere. Oh, and then, um, okay. You know, so it's yeah. been more than... But for me, it's still... Primary, my primary mm. customer is still the students. Right. You know, okay. And everyone else right. is great. Now, we'll come back to the um, paintings. Um, did you come back home with your family or you came alone? Well, I came alone and uh, I got married after a few years in Ghana. And, so, uh, you were married to more. a Ghanaian? Yes. Uh, wow. from Bogatanga. Oh, wow. So if you don't know Bogatanga, I made videos about Bogatanga a couple of months ago. So just go and check it out. It's in the northern region. You just mm. love it. Mm. It's a very beautiful place. Yeah, untouched mm. land. It's still a virgin. So if you want to go there, you can still visit and see beautiful places in Bogatanga. Yes, now let's go back to the paintings. Um, yeah. We're starting from E, mother of um, humanity. Um, oh, I think this is the Eve I know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so why Eve? Well, because, you know, in, uh, since Christianity is so prevalent here mm -hmm. and the European Christians are the ones that given you the Christianity that you know, mm. everything you see, Adam and Eve are European, the Jesus is the Moses, all the people are European. So we know, and any scientist who is worth their degree knows mm -hmm. that our species, which is Homo sapiens sapiens, mm. started in East Africa some 200,000 years ago. Right. So that's the first people of our species and everyone knows that, or they should know that. Mm. So when we get pictures of this Eve who is a European, it's not even genetically possible. So we know the first ones were in Africa, so I call her Eve to connect that first woman, first person in our species with where they actually came from. Mm. So that's actually a problem with some of the people when they first come through here because mm -hmm. they've grown up seeing Adam and Eve look like two European actri actors mm -hmm. and actresses. Mm. So it shakes them up. But <laughs> it gives us a chance to discuss right. migration out of Africa to populate the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And the, key, the main point I like to make here, uh, there are a lot of points, but one, no one left Africa for about 130,000 years. So. 70,000 years or so, people began to leave Africa to populate the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So for the first hundred, two thirds of human history, there was no one in the world who was not on the African continent. There was no oh. Chinese, there was no all of the yeah, rest. Right. So, so that runs counter to what they're taught, but mm. it's very easy to prove. So. Wow. <laughs> uh, there's more to learn. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next, we're, we are going to talk about it randomly. So I want okay, you to yeah, just select it'll, them. It'll take we'll, time. Right. Maybe. There's like a hundred minutes. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I want you to just go through with me. Uh -huh. I don't even know how to select, select <laughs> randomly because they're yeah. all kind of important. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I'll do is I'll give you like a few seconds on each one and okay. we can just keep moving that right. way, you know. Yeah. And if anyone you want like more detail, then, then we're stop. going to work. Yeah. Okay, so that's Eve. Chinua Chevy, a lot of you know, mm -hmm. Things Fall Apart, one of the great writers mm -hmm. uh, out of Nigeria, Asa Hilliard, psychologist, historian, uh, who taught. Right. Uh, Asa Hilliard is a uh, psychologist, historian, uh, Egyptologist that really taught a lot of us a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Yaa Santua, if you're in Ghana, you know she's the queen right. mother of Rajisu, yeah. who struggled against the British. 
Didan Kamati, most Ghanaians know Kamati because mm. Jerry Rawlings named his son Kamati, after yeah. this warrior mm. who is a uh, guerrilla warrior against the British who were of course taken over yeah. in Kenya. And Zenga, uh, another warrior queen that we had some 500 years ago struggling against the Portuguese to maintain her sovereignty. Mm. Ajete, most Ghanaians know him for having uh, been shot and killed right. with, uh, and sparking the uh, Accra riots. And, mm -hmm. Uh, Maurice Bishop of Grenada, uh, was kind of like um, someone who's trying to get sovereignty for that small nation. And if you know anything about American history, 1983, they bombed the place and destroyed their mm -hmm. small revolution. Uh, Namatan warriors from uh, they struggled against the French there in Dahomey, which is the same as Benin. They were Wilmot Blyden, one of the fathers of Pan Africanism. Mm -hmm. Steve Biko's, where I introduce uh, apartheid, the notion of apartheid to the children. Sony Ali. Uh, the, the founder of the Songhai Empire, which is the last of the three great empires, Mali, Ghana, Songhai, mm -hmm. West Africa. Bahans and the Great Shark, who struggle against, of course, the French too. Mary Makiba, Mama Africa, kicked out of their apartheid South Africa and uh, fought for anti-apartheid all their life. Sheikh Antajab, brilliant Senegalese scholar who told us about the African civilizations of ancient Egypt, or Kemet. Uh, Dessalines, one of the fighters who kicked Napoleon out of uh, Haiti during the Haitian Revolution, George Washington Carver, the agricultural genius at the time in the U.S., Nereri, one of our founding fathers of anti-colonial uh, struggle, Ephraim Amu, a cultural uh, person here mm -hmm. in Ghana, Harriet Tubman, Underground Railroad, who was getting Africans off the slave plantations, mm -hmm. getting them free, Samora Michelle, Mozambique, a young freedom fighter, president who was killed struggling against the Portuguese nanny of Jamaica, uh, a maroon woman who was able to escape and uh, set up their own area, free area for the Africans there in Jamaica. Right. Ali Selassie. They still speak tree. A lot of people did a lot of tree words. Mm. Their heroes are, are Kojo and, and Nani, which some people think is Nana. Mm. They have Chamatang, they have all of these things. It's still there. They eat the same food. Oh, okay. A lot of that is, is wow. still. Haile Selassie, we know him as a reformer. Struggle against the Ethiopians, of course, he's Rastafari. Mm. Uh, Pianke, uh, one of the pharaohs of the founding pharaoh of the 25th dynasty in ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Shaka the Zulu king, consolidating space there in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Fannie Lou Hamer, for us in the U.S., she fought for our right to vote. Togbe mm -hmm. Street, which uh, was, coming, was the one who brought most of the Anlo uh, Ebes down from uh, Norche, uh, uh, Takitawia. Uh, the king around the turn of last century, uh, reformer. Some of the people can see his right. thing yeah. down in Makola Market. Right. Yeah. Menes, this is very interesting for the children because um, they were the, he's the first pharaoh of the first dynasty of ancient Kemet. Mm. So uh, you can, because a lot of people have these white pharaohs in their mind, but right. we have the we have the stone head, so we know what he actually mm -hmm. looks like. Mm -hmm. Amakar Cabral, revolutionary thinker. Guinea Bissau, who kicked out the Portuguese. Imhotep, mm -hmm. world's face, first multiple genius, world's first medical doctor. Toussaint Louverture, one who actually um, kicked the uh, French Napoleon's army out of Haiti. They got their freedom. Nagbewa, father of a lot of the northern groups. Mamprusis, mm -hmm. the Gombas, Moshis, and the rest. Ose Tutu. Uh, the first is Santahini, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Sankara, Sankara out of Burkina yeah, Faso, so, the young yeah. revolutionary leader, and mm -hmm. Reynas, the queen who kicked uh, the Roman army out of Kush, forced him into the treaty for 300 years. Mm -hmm. Menelik, who of course stopped the Italians from colonizing Ethiopia. Malcolm X, our fiery young leader, the U.S. Uh, Chesue, uh, another one of the powerful Zulu kings. Akhenaten mm -hmm. of ancient Kemet. African Kemet, which is, uh, some people call him the father of monotheism. Great Bob Marley, we all know him. Yeah. Uh, Wangari Maathai from Kenya, where she won the Nobel Prize for planting the trees and other things. Mm -hmm. uh, Singbe Pie, who revolted on the Amistad to get uh, freedom for the Africans trying to get their ship back to Africa. Fred Hampton of the Black Panther Party. There's a movie out on him right now. Yeah. Uh, he was killed uh, by the American government. Maharero was struggling against the Germans who were uh, causing a small, uh, medium-sized genocide there in Namibia, slaughtering uh, tens of thousands of our people. Oliver Tambo, also uh, uh, 
South Africa, ANC, Augustino Neto was one of our Imhotep men instead of Renaissance. We call him Imhotep men because he was a medical doctor, poet, and all the rest. Plus, he led the anti um, colonization struggle against the Portuguese. Is Abbott, a young Haitian girl who kept running away over and over again, tortured. Finally, she she died, but she had the spirit of freedom. Baby Ray, who struggled against the British, went to hut tax wars. Felix Mumi, who was poisoned in Geneva as he was there to negotiate. Seko Huni, one of our great um, leaders in Southern Africa who struggled against the Boers and the British and the rest. And the Honda, spirit woman in Zimbabwe, uh, leader of one of the Greeks, Shimaranga. Martin Luther King, human rights leader from the U.S. at ships with one of the great female African pharaohs of ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet. Uh, Khalid Arad, who, who knocked, the, kept the Arabs at war with the Arabs who were uh, coming south there out of Egypt after the Arabs took over. Mm -hmm. He stopped them. They had a 700-year treaty. Uh, Muhammad Ali, greatest boxer of all times and also a uh, liberated black man. Mm -hmm. uh, black George Oak struggled against, uh, yeah. in Tayor against the, um, <coughs> the French who were trying to run railroads through his country. Antonio Maceo, uh, leader in Cuba, one of the generals that led their independence struggle against the Spanish. Patrice Lumumba in the Congo killed the young. We tell the children about the rubber, 10 million Africans who died in the Congo rubber mm -hmm. trade in Kwabanika, had a struggle against the Germans uh, back in, uh, you know, back in that time. They took his head off and then did crazy things. Elijah Muhammad, uh, the closest thing to a nation that we've had inside the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, whether you like Elijah Muhammad or not, is not so much the issue as in this case whether or not um, he put something in place that African people could have some relative autonomy. Uh, Ida B. Wells, of course, she was an anti-lynching crusader because he used to lynch, lynch African people for, for sport there in the U.S. John Nakello, who had to struggle and get the uh, Omani Arabs off the back of the natives mm -hmm. there in Zanzibar. Fela Kute, liberation singer, musician. Zumbi, another maroon, kind of like uh, you saw with Nanny. Yeah. They formed their own uh, Quilombo or their own nation in the mountains mm -hmm. after they escaped from the Portuguese plantations in Brazil. His Quilombo was called Palmares, which lasted about a hundred right. years. Nascimento, one of our teachers, scholars, and artists there from Brazil. Uh, Nujoma and Namibia, of course they had to struggle against the uh, South African mm -hmm. colonization there. Booker T. Washington, one of our lead educators there in the U.S., B.B. King. King of the Blues, my father's favorite, Walter mm -hmm. Rodney of Guyana, uh, how Europe underdeveloped Africa. Right. Uh, just one of our more brilliant was also killed. Uh, Queen Amina went 500 years ago, so you see this is some of our great African Nigerian Hausa leaders. She was Manlani, uh, was the, really the founder of the uh, Frelimo, which is the force that struggled against the Portuguese there in Mozambique, kind of the mentor to Samoa and Michelle. Garrett Morgan, we know him in the traffic signal and the mm. gas mask and all of that that the firemen use. The brilliant uh, Franz Fanon, Richard of the Earth, uh, psychiatrist, died at a young age. Chilimbwe, who was uh, studied in the U.S. theology but had to come back and still go to war with the British in Malawi. Uh, Seiko Ture, most Ghanaians know him as yeah. the co-president, taking Kwame Nkrumah as the co-president. He was also, um, did not accept French su suzanry after they were independent. Uh, Ami Sasser, one of the great uh, thinkers, poets, writers, uh, starting uh, something called uh, uh, Negritude, which was a literary movement among black, African, Caribbean, French-speaking artists, writers, and thinkers. Samori Touré, who was by far the most successful struggling against the French. Uh, Kwame Touré, who for us was called Stokely Carmichael, uh, he ended up being Kwame Ture when he got to Guinea, named after Kwame Nkrumah mm -hmm. and Seiko mm -hmm. Ture. Our great teachers, John Henry Clark, Yosef Benyakinen. Mm -hmm. um, in the U.S., these are just two of our major, major teachers. I've written a lot of books and always available to us for learning and teaching. The great other Mama Africa, which is Winnie Mandela, South Africa. Uh, she stood in there when others wouldn't. Francis Cress Wilson, who helped us learn something about 
the European way of thinking. Wow. Wow. So that's mm. the quick and dirty. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really appreciate that for you taking us through all of this. Yeah, um. sorry we didn't, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't have anybody come kind of pick up a little bit, clean up some of the uh, plastic. You know, it's plastic all over Ghana now. <laughs> and back here is, uh, mm. I'm doing a library on the bottom. All right. And then in the middle, I'll do a multi-purpose room with some more accommodations on the top. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Accra to this place, it's not really far but the traffic and all the that traffic right so if someone comes here and want to leave around like stay for the night um do you have any accommodation of course i do wow <laughs> <laughs> i'll show them to you in a moment right yeah. so with that we'll be in the part two of the video so we will just end this here if you saw your leader or you saw someone you really like please don't hesitate to name your son to name your daughter after that and, after and name the other person people who you like to <laughs> see right yes don't forget that right so there are so many spaces here that we can put more paintings you got a whole other right. side of the wall right so just put the name of the person you didn't see here in the comment section so that we can put a painting next time i'll come you'll see the name there and you thank me for that um well, thank you so we, we can't guarantee it but we're, we're yeah, open to we'll definitely come though <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um in the other part of the video i'm going to show you um where you can have accommodation right on this same compound and um yes we have more to do um what would be the advice to african americans or africans in the diaspora who want to move to africa for the first time who want to come for the first right. time but well, i think everyone should come mm -hmm. but then when you come you know look around there's a lot of countries in africa don't get trapped or stuck into one mind or one mindset mm. take your time realize that uh, it's not going to be as cheap as some people think it can be very expensive, if, especially if you're trying to invest quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I find a lot of people who are successful investing in the U.S. and they come with that same <laughs> kind of hurry up mentality. It doesn't work so well here. Right. You can lose your money quickly. Uh, but that's from a financial standpoint. But from a way of life, standard of living, uh, just uh, being with people like yourself, mm. uh, I, would, I would advise everyone to at least try it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not maybe for everyone, but um, if it's not for you, you, you have to ask yourself why not. Mm. Yeah. If you're black in America and then Africa is not for you, then you have to ask yourself why not. Mm. And sometimes it's, you know, financial, family obligations. That's a normal thing. But, but just in terms of us uh, not wanting to be in space that at least ostensibly belongs to us, that we can build from and eventually have control over, I don't mean us from the U.S., but I mean black folks having control over black space, mm -hmm. which is just nothing that will ever be available to you anywhere other than Africa. Yeah. You know, so and true. So <laughs> why you wouldn't want to be part yeah. of that, you should ask yourself mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. about your motivation. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much. Thank I you. really appreciate that. Appreciate it. Yeah. So whenever you are in Ghana, whenever you find yourself in Accra, just drive straight to prom prom it's just one hour to hit to this place yes and you'll find all these beautiful ancient arts of our ancestors if it's your first time seeing me please don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the bell to get a notification anytime i post a video just visit and then move in later i'll see you on the other side peace out